So we got this new machine here. It's like a 180 amp machine, I believe. Storm. I wonder how many amps it really has on make. Maybe we can make it. It has a plasma cutter on it too, you know that? This machine does? Yeah. Yes. You want to help? Yes. What, whenever there's an Everlast machine, you want to help? Is that how it works? Okay, get your welding gear. No. Yeah. Yeah, let's take this apart. Let's see what's in there. So, Tim and I are installing some toolboxes here under this flatbed. The customer bought some toolboxes. Uh, here, we need to do uh, exhaust extension so that the exhaust gas does not blow directly against the bottom of the toolbox but clears the toolbox. Um, we're using the Everlast Storm 215C and in the beginning you know you could tell yeah it's whatever 180 amp MIG machine I didn't have my specs right. Well by now I have my specs right we ran some 030 and 35 wire in it. Here we have some 309 dual shield in it because we did some other job on some um, lock splitter wedge where we needed the high tensile strength of that 309 wire so we decided to leave that on because um, there was a little bit uh, grease and grime on the bottom of that flatbed and we had to weld through this and the, the dual shield flux core wire is really nice and forgiving for this so here we're doing the exhaust and then after that we're getting the toolboxes ready we're using the plasma on it and let me tell you, I mean, I did a comparison video with the um, with the Everlast machine before and like a Lincoln uh, 210 MP and I felt like the MIG arc on the Everlast machine was a little bit rough. On this machine, Everlast really upped their game. I mean, this machine welds so much nicer than any previous generation MIG machine that they had. And uh, when you look at the screen layout here, it kind of reminds you a little bit of like a 210 MP. Uh, what I've found is that the voltage on the left there that is displayed while the machine is idling, there is a discrepancy of a, of a couple of volts compared to when the machine is welding. But however, I mean, you dial it in the way it needs to be dialed in, and um, that thing is singing like a sewing machine. And then here, in lifetime, in life speed, we're switching over from um, plasma cutting to MIG welding. You can see the MIG gun is still installed on the left. It stays installed. On plasma, you have electrode negative. So your plasma torch plugs into the negative. In order to MIG weld, we need to move the ground clamp from the positive to the negative and unplug the plasma torch from the negative port so it's a fairly simple and fairly safe and, and fast operation here they're about 30 35 seconds and you're ready to go now the only thing that would make it safer is if you unplug the machine before you do this but anyway so who has time for that so here we're using some 3 inch C channel and um, what we're doing is Tim is laying it out to have a little angle on there so uh, that goes later on where the wheel and tire is so we want to have some extra clearance and no sharp edges when the truck uh, goes into the suspension so no tires are being sliced and he's using the plasma part of it and I have to say I mean that thing works nice it's it does exactly what it's supposed to be everything works and um, as I'm making this video here, I checked on the Everlast website, current pricing on this is like $12.99. I mean, 
that's a killer deal for like an all-in-one like a DIY machine you know can you say oh it's not as good as this or that yeah sure you can compare it to like some five thousand dollar machine but if you look at what like a Lincoln 210 MP can and will do for you that costs you two hundred dollars more that does not have the plasma function I definitely think that this machine that's a storm here I mean this will this will kick off a storm this is a this is like the ultimate DIY machine and you see here we're cutting about quarter maybe five sixteenths inch this is real time not sped up and you see the way how the sparks blow almost straight down uh, Tim could go a little bit faster here still um, he's, he's choosing not to he really wants a quality cut but I mean it, it, it does what it what it's supposed to do really well. There, once fully cut through, the piece falls right on the ground, and no, no bridges, no nothing on there. Now, um, I do have fairly dry air, and I'm not sure. I mean, we had the pressure set like 78 psi, maybe it needs to be close to like 72. Um, it's a 40 amp cutter, and you can see that the cut quality. I mean, just the cut quality itself, where the metal is cut. It's absolutely great for hand cutter, and the um, there's a little bit of slag there, but one hit with a chipping hammer falls right off. I'm not worried about a little bit of dross or slag. There was nothing that really had to be majorly ground off. peeling some stuff off with the welding pliers and then giving it a little bit of love with a chipping hammer and the thing is good to go. So here's some uh, layout figuring out where it needs to be welded on then um, marking it all out some powder coat removal those boxes those fire boxes have some nice powder coat on um, removing as little as we have to to get a, a decent weld um, laying out the, the seat channel and then there's nothing to it but to do it and uh, tack it in place and then weld it on all solid Again, remember, it's 309 wire we had from the last job in there, so it sounds and looks a little bit different, but it did a really nice job. kind of what it looks like here. See a nice slag layer and then nice golden little bit blue welds under there. That is that stainless and that 309. Uh, virtually no spatter, absolutely no pinholes, no nothing. Um, it deals with if there's a little bit of uh, contamination on there, there's still some powder coat there where it wasn't ground perfectly and the slag release is like super easy. You don't even have to hammer on it. So this is kind of like the the look, the quality, the, the level of craftsmanship that we were going for here.
So as the slag releases here, and you see in the middle and towards the right is a little bit like purplish dark, that is a indicator for the weld being a little bit too hot. Ideally you see like a gold straw color with like a hint of blue occasionally. So here's another shot of that uh, big box. You see that tapered piece of C-channel that we cut with the plasma cutter earlier. That goes um, in front of the rear axle and that tapered piece of C-channel is close to, not really super close, but close to the rear dual wheels. So it's tapered a little bit to make sure that there's no sharp edges, nothing sticking out, even if the truck, uh, the suspension starts to squat a little bit. and. Um, what that does is that piece sticking out there allows us to catch one more cross member on the underside of the flatbed. So bottom line, what do I think? The machine worked good. Um, at this point I got about two hours on it. Um, how's it gonna hold up? Who knows? Um, you never know. Do I think that the features are good? The features are good. Do I think the arc dynamic is good? The arc dynamic is good. The arc dynamic is maybe even a little bit better than good for the price class that the machine is competing in. And um, time will tell how it's going to work, but it was, I mean, nice, versatile, the price is right, the performance is good. Um, obviously, I haven't worked it that hard, I've not reached any duty cycle or anything, but the job came out good, customer was happy, everything worked. The menu is... The logic is very similar to like a 210 MP. It's easy to understand even if you did not read the full manual. Um, so I guess there was a, I was pleasantly surprised to see the performance of that machine.